Hello, and thanks for clicking on this next Knowledge One production. Today, we're going to talk about how to factor by grouping. Okay, the second method uh, in our factoring event here. Um, let's get started. And if you know your GCFs, this shouldn't be too difficult to process. All right, here we go. Uh, just to review factoring, factoring is the process of undoing the distributor property. So if I had uh, something that looks like this, three times the quantity X plus five, and you distribute the three, you would get three X plus 15. If I ask you to factor it, then I want you to write the answer as three times the quantity X plus five. I want you to undo the distributor property. Factoring changes the form of a polynomial. It does not change its value. So both of these are both equal to 3x plus 15. They're just written in two different ways. Okay. And then the reason we are factoring here is because factoring is necessary to assist you to solve a quadratic equation, which is where we're headed with this. How do we work with quadratic functions, quadratic equations? And how do we solve them and graph them? Factoring will help us to do that. All right. That's why we're on this factoring journey. Okay. So today we're going to factor by grouping. To factor a four-term polynomial, it can often be factored by grouping the terms two by two. All right. The method of factoring is called grouping. Okay. It works well with four-term polynomials because you can divide up your four terms into two groups of two, which is exactly step one of factoring by grouping. Use the parentheses to group the first two terms together and the last two terms together. And then you're going to factor out the GCF from the first group of parentheses. After that, factor out the GCF from the second group of parentheses. Note the two GCFs you factor out don't have to be the same. Okay. But what that, at that point, what will be the same are the two binomials that are left over in the two set of parentheses. And then finally, you're going to factor out that set of parentheses as a GCF, and you'll be able to write your answer. Okay, so this is really about factoring GCF three times. If you can do it, you can factor by grouping. All right, so let's get started. Let's see uh, how we can do this together. So let's try to factor AB minus 4B plus 6A minus 24. So let's put it down here, 6A minus 24. The first step of grouping is to group the first two terms together and the last two terms together. So let's do that first to start. Now, I'm looking for my GCF in the first two terms. Well, there's a one there in front of that A and a four. So one is the first part of the GCF. Uh, and then we got A here, no A in the second term. I can't take an A out. And then we have a B in the first term and a B in this. Okay, I can take a B out. All right, that's in common. Okay, so now I'm going to divide both of these by 1B or by B, and I'm going to write what's left. 1 divided by 1 is 1. Uh, A, well, there's nothing to knock it out, so A remains. B gets knocked out by B underneath, so I'm left with 1A, or I could just write it as A. Uh, and then we got negative 4 divided by 1, that's negative 4. And there's one power B on top, one on the bottom, they knock each other out. They're gone, and now we are left with a negative 4 in the second set. So we have B times A minus 4. Okay, let's go to the next set of parentheses. I'm looking for the GCF. I don't care about the first GCF. All I care about what the GCF is in the next two terms. So we got a 6 and a 24. 6 goes into both, and it's a positive 6, right? Okay, this leading term is a positive, so it's going to be a positive 6 there. Uh, we got an A in the first term, not in the second, so I can't take an A out. So positive 6 is my only GCF. All right, we're going to divide by 6 and see what we get. 6 divided by 6 is 1, and there's still an A left, so we got an A. Negative 24 over 6 is negative 4. Okay, so now we have our uh, two factor GCFs here. All right. Let's make sure everybody knows this is a 6. Okay, that's not helping. That's a 6. And this is a B. All right. 
But now, here's what I need you to notice, okay? If you watch the uh, factoring GCF video, the two binomials, I have one term here. This is a term now. It's all multiplied stuff plus this is a term here. All multiplied stuff. Well, there's something in common between this circled term here and this circled term here. It's a minus 4. There's an a minus 4 in each. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to factor out a minus 4 as a GCF. I'm going to divide each one of these by a minus 4, and then I'm going to write what's left. a minus 4 divided by a minus 4, they knock each other out. So I'm left with b, or 1b in the first set of parentheses, and then this a minus 4 knocks out that a minus 4, leaving me with plus 6 in the second set of parentheses. I really don't need the 1 here. And finally, I have a minus 4 times b plus 6. That's the correct answer. It's all done. Now, I could check to make sure that it's right. Remember, factoring and the distributive property, they undo each other. So, if I were to distribute, a times b is ab, a times 6, 6a, negative 4 times b, negative 4b, negative 4 times 6, negative 24. And sure enough, if I look at what I have at the start here versus what I just got when I distributed, it's the same thing. So this checks out. It must be the correct answer. All I did was change the way that this polynomial looks. I changed it into this. This is done. All right, let's try another one. Same idea. We're going to group. This has one, two, three, four terms. Grouping is definitely what I want to do on this. It's got four terms. So I'm going to group the first two terms together. And I'm going to group the last two terms together. And now I'm going to go look for the GCF. We'll start with the first set. GCF between a 6 and an 8, that's 2. Uh, there's an x here in this term. There's an x here in that term. So I can take one power of x out. And there's a y in the first term, but not in the second term. So I can't take a y out. Uh, it's not in common in both. So my GCF is 2x. I'm going to divide both of these by 2x. And we'll see what remains in the parentheses. 6 divided by 2, that's 3 x divided by x, they knock each other out. y is still left in that first term. 8 divided by 2 is 4. x divided by x, 1 power of x, versus 1 power of x, they knock each other out. In the second set, uh, between 21 and 28, 7 goes into each, but it leads with a negative, so I have to take out negative 7. There's a y in the first term, but not in the second one, so I can't take out the y but I can factor out the GCF of negative 7. I'm going to divide both of these by negative 7. Negative 21 over negative 7 is 3. The Y is still there. Negative 28 over negative 7 is positive 4. Negative divided by negative is a positive. Now, if you take a look, you have one term here and another term here. I'm looking for one final GCF. My two sets of parentheses should match. They have to match. If these two sets of parentheses do not match, you did it wrong. There's no question about it. This is the only way to factor by grouping. These two sets have to match because they are now the GCF. So 3y plus 4 is going to be the GCF. And then I have to write what remains. So they knock each other out. I'm left with a 2x in the first term. They knock each other out. I'm left with a negative 7 in the second term. 3y plus 4 times 2x minus 7. And that's the correct answer. If I were to multiply this out, I would get back to here again. All I'm doing is changing the form of this polynomial. All right, let's try uh, 15x cubed minus 5x squared minus 3x plus 1. Again, there are 1, 2, 3, 4 terms. This is a grouping problem. It's got four terms in it. Here we go. So we're going to group first two, last two. Okay, GCF of the first two, 15 and 5. 5 goes into both. We're going to take that out. 3 powers of x in the first term, 2 in the second term. We can take out the smaller of the two, which is 2 powers of x. We're going to divide both of these by 5x squared, and we're going to write what remains. 15 over 5 is 3. 
x to the third, three powers of x up top, two on the bottom. I can take two away, and there'll be one remaining. Negative five over five is negative one. Two powers of x up top, two on the bottom. They all knock each other out. There's none left. In the next GCF, we got a three and a one. So one is part of the GCF. Now, but I also lead with a negative. So it has to be a negative one, not a positive. And then there's an x in the first term, not in the second term. So I'm not going to take out an x. I'm just going to divide both of these by negative one. Negative 3 over negative 1 is positive 3. X still remains. Negative 1, I'm sorry, positive 1 over negative 1 is negative 1. Now again, take a look. Here we go. One term, second term. The two parentheses, they should match. They do. So now that is the GCF. 3X minus 1 is my GCF. I'm going to divide both of these by 3X minus 1. And I'm going to be left with 5x squared in the first term, minus 1 in the second term, times the 3x minus 1. That was the last GCF. And this is the correct answer. This is all done. Okay? There's no more to do with it. All right? And then finally, we have one more. 4n to the third, minus 12n squared, minus 3n, plus 9. 1, 2, 3, 4 terms. This is a grouping problem. First two together. Last two together. GCF of the first two. 4 and 12. 4 goes into both. Uh, 3 powers of n in the first term. 2 in the second. So I can take out 2 powers of n. I'm going to divide both of these by 4n squared. 4 over 4, that's 1. n to the third divided by n to the second. 3 powers of n up top. 2 on the bottom. Take 2 away. 1 will remain. Negative 12 over 4, negative 3. Two powers of n up top, two on the bottom. They knock each other out. That's done. First set. Next set, uh, we got a 3 and a 9. 3 goes into both, but that 3 is a negative. It leads with a negative. You've got to take a negative out. n in the first term, not in the second. Can't take an n out. Negative 3 is my GCF. Negative 3 over negative 3 is 1. Uh, I'm still left with the n, so I still have n there. 9 over negative 3 is negative 3. Uh, remember, this first term here, I got 1n. I really don't need the 1 there. It's not necessary. Uh, but now I have a term here. I have a term here. These parentheses match each other. I'm doing this right. My last GCF is n plus, minus 3, and I'm going to divide each of these by n minus 3. Crosses those out, and I'm going to be left with, for the second set, 4n squared minus 3. That's the correct answer. And this is done. Okay? And that's how you factor by grouping. And as always, thanks for clicking.